left hope that whatever happens here can serve as a bridge between our civilizations. That's the diplomat in you talking. What does the soldier say? Nothing good. Hey everyone, Greg here to break down the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery. As always, you can hit me up on my Twitter at GregFT155. Now before we jump into episodes one and two, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our other awesome coverage, including American Horror Story, Rick and Morty, Twin Peaks, Preacher, and much more. Okay everyone, let's jump into episodes one and two, The Vulcan Hello, and The Battle of the Binary Stars. Beware, there are spoilers ahead. First up, a quick recap. Discovery is set 10 years before the adventures of Kirk, Spock, and the crew of the USS Enterprise. The show will follow the voyages of the Starfleet crew on board the USS Discovery on their missions to discover new worlds and life forms. Discovery doesn't waste any time to establish a close rapport between the lead, Lieutenant Michael Burnham, and USS Shenzo Captain Giorgio. I think it's time that we talked about you having your own command. I'm grateful, Captain. The Klingons have arrived, and they are not f***ing around. There's moral dilemmas, space battles, and long distance mind melds. How is it possible? A mind meld across a thousand light years. Starting off, the cold opening did a masterful job of setting up our main characters and letting us know right off the bat this is definitely Star Trek. In fact, the first two episodes don't really stray too far off the fundamentals of the Star Trek mythos. First officer's log, start at 1207.3. On Earth, it's May 11th, 2256. The main plot starts with USS Shenzo called to the edge of Federation space to investigate damage done to an interstellar relay. It doesn't take long for the crew to figure out that this wasn't an accident. You think someone's trying to get our attention? If they are, they have. The crew soon discovers that they're not alone as Michael ventures out into an asteroid belt to investigate a strange object that comes across as a Klingon ship. Scanning for database recognition. Iconography confirmed. Klingon. This is the first Klingon that anyone has seen in a century. The encounter goes as poorly as you could imagine. As the Klingon charges, Burnham fires her suit thrusters and rams him with his own bat lith blade. Michael is knocked unconscious and wakes up in the sick bay hours later. Rim -air. Now let's talk about the Klingons. The first two episodes do a great job at universe building here. This is where I believe the writers truly excelled. Right off the bat, the Klingons are seen as a force of nature. Hell, the Klingon beacon alone almost overwhelms the Shenju ship. Early on, we're introduced to Takuvma, and his goals seem to be very straightforward. Reunite the 24 warring Klingon houses under one strong empire, and wipe out those with, in his words, the fatal greeting, we come in peace. Now the look of the Klingons is just something I'm gonna have to get used to. This is a far departure from the TNG days. I actually like J.J. Abrams' Klingons from Into Darkness more than Discovery's version. There's so much makeup on the new Klingons that it's tough for them to show any range of different emotions other than obviously anger. Small side note, this story takes place in the prime timeline, so it's gonna ignore everything from the Abrams movie canon, which takes place in the Kelvin timeline. Okay, got it? Let's move on. Back to the plot, the Klingons are looking for a replacement for the one that Michael killed, and Vok, son of Nun, a white Klingon with no family blade, applies for the job by, you know, calmly placing his hand in an open flame. Give me the jump! Give me the jump! I'm not going to give it to you. When Michael wakes up, she charges on the bridge and demands that the captain fire on the Klingons. The only way to deal with the Klingons is to fire first. This is the Vulcan hello of the title. They said hello in a language the Klingons understood. Violence brought respect, respect brought peace. This leads to Michael using the Vulcan nerve pinch on the captain and attempt to take command of the ship in order to fire on the Klingon vessel. This doesn't go well. Fire, belay that order. Captain, please. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save all of you. From there, Michael is locked in the brig, the Klingons spring their attack, and Sarek reaches out to Burnham with a long distance phone call, I mean mind meld. Now the second episode delves into a lot more exposition with Michael and Takuvma. We get a little more backstory into the characters' paths and what led them to this very moment of battle. Prepare to receive my envoy. We'll get ready for your arrival. My favorite moment from the two episodes has to be when Takuvma rams a Klingon ship right into the USS Europa. 
later, Admiral Anderson. If only you had Admiral Akbar to help you. It's My second favorite moment has to be when Captain Giorgio rigged a Klingon corpse with a bomb. That was fucking awesome. Now let's jump into the winners and losers of the first two episodes. Now the winner is obviously Takufma. His plan to reunite the 24 houses seems to be working and his death should only help the cause going forward in the series. And if I had to pick one loser for the two episodes, it would have to be number one. Michael's plan of insubordination backfired and only led to the death of Captain Giorgio. Now with that said, I find it highly unlikely that had the USS Shenzhou attacked first, this would lead to a better outcome. Now my final thoughts on the two episodes are surprisingly very positive. I really, really enjoyed the premiere a lot more than I thought I would. It felt like a blend of DS9 and the original series with the look of the Abrams films. On that same note, I hope that the showrunners calmed down a little bit with the lens flares. It started to get a little distracting for me after a while, but the rest of the production value looked so good. It was extremely polished. And also one last gripe, who the hell sends a captain and a commander on an away mission without any security detail? Yes, the original series did this all the time, but it's still weird that not a single crew member joined them. Okay, everyone, let's jump into a few Easter eggs and a few other things I noticed. What will you do if you were stuck here for 89 years? A likely scenario, unless we die here in the desert. But say you lived. Now this line is a slight reference to Wrath of Khan, when Kirk exiled Khan and his fellow crew to SETI Alpha 5 after they attempted to take over the Enterprise. SETI Alpha 6 exploded, shifting the orbit of SETI Alpha 5 and destroying the ecosystem. Khan and his crew were trapped on the desert planet for 15 years before they finally escaped in the movie. Mr. Yanuzi, contact our fleet command. Send an encoded message. Tell them we have engaged the Klingons. Now from that, I can't help but recall this famous line. Dispatch a subspace message to Admiral Hanson. We have engaged the Borg. Now in Captain Giorgio's ready room, you can see a bottle of Chateau Picard. Also in the ready room are a stack of books that happen to be the titles of classic TOS episodes, such as The Trouble with Tribbles, The Way to Eden, Mirror Mirror, and Return to Tomorrow. Now in that awesome opening title sequence, the music draws heavy inspiration from the original series. Space, the final frontier. If you're watching the series through Netflix, you'll be able to switch the subtitles to Klingon. No, seriously. The new Discovery suits will follow a color scheme of gold, silver, and copper. Gold for command, silver for science, and copper for operations and engineering. TOS fans will notice that the first two episodes are eerily similar to the original series Balance of Terror episode, when the Enterprise encountered a Romulan vessel equipped with a cloaking device. Writer Brian Fuller even addressed his love for that episode on Twitter a few weeks back. All right, that's it for me over here, everybody. Chastity will be joining me in the future breakdowns for this show. So far, so good. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about the first two episodes. And as always, keep it here to GameSpot Universe. Live long and prosper.